A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis. This video is brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 6th of September 2022. So before getting into the list of news articles, I have an announcement for you. See the pre-storming test series batch 1 is going to start in Ananagar. Starts on 12th of September 2022 and the first test will be on 19th of September 2022. The series will be covering 66 tests which also includes general studies, CSAT and 3 mock tests. All the tests will be conducted in offline mode on the scheduled dates from 2 pm to 4 pm followed by live discussion from 4.30 pm to 7.30 pm. The students who missed the offline test can take the test after 2 days in online and they will be provided with recorded discussions. The availability of online mode test is until our mock test before prelims 2023 examination. The explanation key will also be provided to the students. So with this announcement, now let us see the list of news articles that have been chosen for today's discussion. Today we have four different news articles. Along with that we have a quiz question at the end. So now without wasting much time, let's get into the first news article discussion. Now have a look at this news article. See this news article talks about the additional solicitor general of India in short ASG. Now the ASG is in news because he has appeared in Supreme Court on behalf of former municipal administration minister SP Velmani and the advocate general of the state has opposed this move because the minister is charged against two corruption cases. So here ASG has taken up a private case of former municipal administration minister S.P. Velumani and he has appeared on behalf of him in the Supreme Court. So this is the crux of the news article given here in this background. Let us quickly go through the additional solicitor general and then we will see whether uh, ASG can appear on behalf of a minister in a private case or not. So before that have this basic understanding the attorney general of India the Solicitor General for India and the Additional Solicitor General for India. All the three are meant and included as law officers. And the ASG is the third ranked law officer in the government of India. Here also you have to note one thing. The post of ASG is not constitutional as the constitution does not have any provisions regarding ASG. Yes, the article 76 of the constitution does not talk anything about ASG. And it is said that the post of ASG can come into force on the date of their publication in the official cassette. So the term of office of Additional Solicitor General of India is 3 years and the person appointed to the post shall hold the office for the period for which such post has been created. The seat of the Additional Solicitor General of India may be at New Delhi or Mumbai or Chennai or Allahabad as the government of India specifies. And the post of ASG is governed by Law Officers Conditions of Service Rules 1987. So the post of ASG is not constitutional but statutory. Their main responsibility is to assist the Attorney General in the fulfillment of his official responsibilities. And note that the additional Solicitor General will take precedence above the Advocate General of State and very importantly, ASG is eligible for reappointment after his or her term expires. So now coming to the duties of ASG. Firstly, ASG need to give advice to the government of India upon legal matters. And they should perform such other duties of a legal character that is assigned to him by the government of India. Okay. Secondly, the ASG should appear whenever required in the Supreme Court or in any High Court on the behalf of the Government of India in cases including suits, writ petition, appeal and other proceedings. Note that in these cases the Government of India is concerned as a party or is otherwise interested. Okay. Thirdly, the ASG should represent the Government of India in any reference made by the President to the Supreme Court. This is under Article 143 of the Constitution. 
and finally asd should discharge such other functions as conferred on law officers by or under the constitution or any other law for the time being in force so these are some of the functions or duties that we have to make note of now we shall see some of the restrictions imposed on asd see asd should not hold briefs in any court for any party except the government of india or the government of a state or any university common school or college local authority public service commission port trust port commissioners this provisions includes government aided or government managed hospitals a government company and it even includes corporations owned or controlled by the state secondly asg should not advise any party against the government of india or a public sector undertaking then the asg should not defend an accused in a criminal prosecution without the permission of government of india so which means asg can take up private cases but he can appear in front of court only after getting permission from the government of india now coming back the asg should not accept appointment to any office in any company or corporation without the permission of government of india and lastly the asg should not advise any minister or department of government of india or any statutory organization or any public sector undertakings this is unless the proposal or a reference in this regard is required is received through the ministry of law and justice okay so now coming to the question whether asg can appear on behalf of an ex minister or not see we already saw in the restriction that in certain cases with the permission of government of india the asg can appear for a private party so the news article also says that the chief justice had not objected the appearance of asg raju on behalf of the former municipal administration minister sp velumani this is because he had obtained the permission of the center for taking up the private cases so as long as the center does not withdraws the permission the asg cannot be restrained from this case so that's all you have to know about asg very very important topic so in this news article discussion we saw in detail about asg his appointment tenure and some of his functions so these learn to points now let us move on to the next news article discussion have a look at this news article see this news article talks about the flow test see the upa government in jharkhand won the trust vote and the opposition staged a walkout so it was for the first time that a ruling coalition government in jharkhand had moved a confidence motion to prove its majority in the house so in this backdrop let us discuss about the flow test or trust vote so what is flow test See a flow test is a measure to check whether the executive is enjoying the confidence of the legislature. See the constitution does not mandate a political party to have an absolute majority for forming the government, but the ministers forming the executive must enjoy the confidence of the legislature because the legislature represents the will of the public. So in cases where this majority is questioned, the leader of the house need to prove the majority. and this is done through undergoing a trust vote if the leader fails to do so he or she is bound to resign from the position if that happens it will directly lead to dissolution of the entire house note that the trust vote or the flow test can be initiated at the central as well as state levels okay now let us see how is this flow test procedure done say for example to check whether the government enjoys majority in lok sabha or not a no confidence motion can be introduced this motion can be introduced by any member of the house who believes the government in power lacks a majority if the motion is approved then the ruling party must demonstrate that it has a majority in the house also remember a no confidence motion need not set any grounds on which it is based even when grounds are mentioned in the notice and read out in the house they do not form part of the no confidence motion so make note of this as well so that's all about this news article discussion in this news article discussion we saw in brief about what is flow test or trust vote so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion have a look at this news article see this news article talks about the prapti portal see The Power Ministry has prescribed standard operating procedure that is SOP this enables state power distribution companies to cross check and respond to invoices raised by generation companies and other suppliers and these invoices are uploaded in the prapti portal 
so this is the crux of the news article given here in this context let us discuss about this prapti portal also we will discuss the sop mentioned in the news article okay firstly know that the expansion of prapti is payment ratification and analysis in power procurement for bringing transparency in invoicing of generators see you don't have to remember the whole expansion if you can mention it is prapti portal that's enough see this is a web portal and an app so what is the purpose of this portal and app see the prapti app and the web portal has been developed to bring transparency in power purchase transactions between generators and discoms secondly it will capture the invoicing and payment data for various long term ppas from the generators and this will help the stakeholders in getting month wise and legacy data on outstanding amounts of discoms against power purchase okay thirdly the app will allow users to know the details relating to the payments made by the discoms to the power generation company also it shows when they were made okay then prapti will also enable the consumers to evaluate financial performance of their discoms this in terms of payments being made to the generation companies then the portal would help discoms and gencos to reconcile their outstanding payments okay also the portal would facilitate relative assessment of various state discounts on ease of making payments to various generation companies and it will also help make transactions in the power sector more transparent so now coming to the news article see last month the tangent co was banned from trading on power exchanges this is for non payments of dues this ban is based on the electricity late payment surcharge that is lps and related matters rules 2022 which was notified by the center so after the ban the tamil nadu electricity minister said that the portal was not user friendly he also said that it did not allow the states to check or scrutinize the bills and it did not allow the states to seek for modifications so asop has been prescribed by the power ministry see the lps rules enable distribution companies to liquidate their outstanding dues this is only up to june 3 2020 and this is in equivalent monthly installments also the rules provide for regulation of access to power in case of non payment of dues this is one month after the due date for payment or two and a half months after the presentation of bills so what is said in the sop see as per the sop suppliers should upload the invoices presented to the distribution companies this is within 5 days including holidays and they won't be allowed to update the details beyond the period okay then the distribution companies that is discoms would be sent an automated email about the newly uploaded invoice this will include the details about the default trigger date and the discoms may provide their feedback about their invoices but this is within 10 days from the updation of the invoice on the portal okay in case the discoms provide nothing within the set date then the invoices would be automatically frozen but the suppliers can update the invoice after the inputs from the discoms this is within 10 days then the sop also noted that the discoms shall be responsible for updation of payment details against the invoices and information available on the portal this should be at 5:30 pm a day before the default trigger date then the discom has to certify that the invoice amount has been settled in full so that's all about this news article discussion in this news article discussion we saw in detail about prapti portal its objectives then we saw the newly issued sop so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion now let us take up this text and context article see this article talks about the functions of the seat belts and the head restraints in a vehicle and also about the india's seat belt policy now again this is in news because of the death of former chairman of tata sons siras p mystery in a car crash so today we are not going to get deeper into the issue instead we shall learn about functions of seat belts and head restraints in a vehicle and also about the india's seat belt policy before that the syllabus relevant to this news article is highlighted here for a reference just go through it First let us have a basic idea about seat belts. 
See, the seat belt is a vehicle safety device designed to secure the driver or a passenger of a vehicle against harmful movement that may result during a collision or a sudden stop. So, in simple words, a seat belt reduces the likelihood of death or serious injury in a traffic collision. The seat belt has proven to be the most important safety device in cars as it drastically increases the chance of survival of the occupants in the event of an accident. It has been estimated that seat belts reduce the risk of death for a front seat about 50%. So, with this information, now let us see how the seat belts work. See, before going into that, we should know what is inertia. This will help in understanding the functions of seat belt better. See, inertia is the tendency of a physical object to remain at the state of rest or in uniform motion in the straight line unless a force is applied to it. So, here the physical object may be a person or any kind of object like bike, car, ball, etc. Now, we will get into the function of seat belts. Suppose when a car is speeding along at 50 km per hour, it has tendency to keep moving at the same speed and in the same direction unless some force acts on it. So here the car accelerates its occupants to its own speed so that they seem to be moving as a single unit. However, the inertia of the occupant is independent of the inertia of the car. So, for example, if the car crashed into a tree, the force of the tree would bring the car to an abrupt halt. The speed of the occupants, however, would remain the same because of their independent inertia and they would bang into the steering wheel or dashboard or the windshield. The force exerted by the steering wheel or the windshield would then bring the occupant to a stop. But this process might cause injury to vulnerable body parts like the head and the face. Now the seat belt's job is to spread this stopping force across steadier parts of the body over a longer period of time to minimize damage. So remember a typical seat belt consists of a lap belt which rests over the pelvis and the shoulder belt which extends across the chest. The two belt sections are tightly secured to the frame of the car in order to hold passengers in their seat. When the belt is worn correctly, it will apply most of the stopping force to the ribcage and the pelvis which are relatively steady parts of the body. Since the belts extend across a wide section of the body, the force is not concentrated in a small area so it cannot do as much damage. Additionally, the seat belt webbing is made of a material having some flexibility so, it stretches a little bit thereby making the stop less abrupt. So, I hope now you all could understand how the seat belts functions. Now, we shall have a brief idea about head restraints. See, the head restraints or head rest, they are also an automotive safety feature. It is attached into the top of each seat to limit the rearward movement of the occupant's head during a collision. And the main purpose of this is to prevent injury to the cervical vertebrae. So having understand this, now we will see about what the government's rule is saying about the seat belts and the punishments in case of violation of rules. See, as per the rule 138.3 of the Central Motor Vehicle Rules, in short CMBR of 1989, the driver and the person seated in the front seat or the persons occupying front seat facing rear seats should wear the seat belts while the vehicle is in motion. Apart from this, Rule 125.1 of CMVR requires the manufacturers of every motor vehicles other than motorcycles that is two wheelers and three wheelers of engine capacity not exceeding 500 cc shall to equip every such vehicle with a seat belt for the driver and for the person occupying the front seat. Then the rule 125 1A of CMVR requires the manufacturer of every motor vehicle that is used for carriage of passengers comprising not more than 8 seats in addition to the driver's seat shall to equip it with a seat belt for a person occupying the front facing rear seat. So this is what the central motor vehicle rules of 1989 talks about. Now let us see about the penal provisions. 
See the violation of any of the provisions of the Rule 138.3 of the CMVR 1989 would constitute an offence punishable under Section 177 of the Motor Vehicles Act, that is MVA 1988. Here, the section 177 deals with the general provisions for punishment of offences. It says that whoever contravenes any provision of the MVA or of any rules, including CMVR or regulations or notifications made, shall be punishable for the first offence with fine, which may extend to one hundred rupees, and any second or subsequent offence with fine, which may extend to three hundred rupees. So, this is about the penal provisions. So now let us see some of the flaws in the rules and penal provisions. See many of the vehicle manufacturers are compromising the quality of seat belts in the name of cost efficient vehicles and there is no strict regulation to check the quality of the seat belts and headrest line in a vehicle. Also the fine amount is meager in case of violation of rules. So the possible solutions are the government should frequently inspect the quality of seat belts to avoid the loss of life and also the fine amount should have to be enhanced for the stricter enforcement of rules in case of violation so that's all about this news article discussion in this news article discussion we saw in detail about seat belts how it works and we saw about head restraints and finally we ended our discussion by seeing some of the provisions with respect to seat belts and the punishments in case of violation of rules so with these learned points now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion which is the preliminary practice questions now look at this first question with reference to trust word consider the following statements statement 1 no conference motion can be introduced only in lok sabha statement 2 failure of trust word leads to dissolution of the entire house So the question asks for the correct statement here. The correct answer for the question is option D, neither one nor two. See, statement one is incorrect because no confidence motion is introduced to check whether executive is enjoying the confidence of legislature. So it can be initiated in both central and state government. So this statement is incorrect. Statement two is also incorrect because trust vote is a checking of the confidence of the legislature. and it directly does not lead to dissolution of the entire house only the government will be dissolved if the trust vote is failed so the correct answer for the question is option d neither one not two now look at the second question which among the following describes about prapti that is often seen in news option a first aircraft carrier to be built in india option b a portal to support india's elderly population option c an app and web portal developed to bring transparency in power purchase transactions between generators and discounts and option d none of the above see the correct answer for the question is option c we saw that in the discussion also right now option a is incorrect because first aircraft carrier to be built in india is ins vikrant statement 2 is also incorrect because it talks about sagi that is senior care aging growth engine which is an initiative and portal to support india's elderly okay so this option is also incorrect so the correct answer for the question is option c now moving on the displayed question is the quiz question for you today just go through the question try to find the correct answer and post the correct answer in the comment section i'll post the quiz question in the poll as well so you can attend the quiz in the poll section as well so now moving on the question displayed here is the main question for you today go through the question write an answer and post it in the comment section you can either type your answer in the comment section or you can share the link of the pdf containing the photocopy of the answer in the comment section will evaluate your answers so with this we came to the end of the news article discussion if you like the video hit like do share and comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ai's academy youtube channel thank you